Inside, inside is a canyon into which I'm falling. Salt tears on my tongue. Feathers from Batata can drift down like stars crossing empty space. I fall and listen to my heart. Listen. How it beats out a single rhythm matching echoes of your voice. Things are sliding off here. In the net, having a cat in a house is very, very important. It drives away um, things that are out there. I guess evil spirit or whatever you might call it. Cat is a very important um, um, animal that we always have around the Hogan hole. The one I wrote some time ago is a medicine cat. For days, old lady small canning complained of weaknesses. She has been 69 with winters without illness. She has walked miles after her flock of sheep. She said her body ached and her vision blurred. Medicine men were called upon and they came and they went. She has lightning sickness. She must have a ceremony right away. Many goats, the medicine man proclaimed. Skinwalker has witched her. She must have, have, she must have an evil waste ceremony, another medicine man says. Old Lady Small Canyon's family and relative call upon their clan members to discuss the ceremony. It will last several days and cost plenty of sheep and jewelry. Blue Sod is a powerful medicine man in the enemy way ceremony, one family member said. He lives the days right north of here. He will perform the ceremony to rid our clan mother of this terrible weight upon her spirit. Another grandson added, there was much feasting and card games after the matter were settled. Morning Dove, the old lady's youngest son rode off early the next day to fetch the great medicine man. Blue salt. In his saddlebag, he carried turquoise necklace and silver conch belt to offer the medicine man as a, as a gift for his service. The family and the clan member worked hard that day preparing for the event. They hauled firewood and barrels of water in the wagons. The women butchered three fat sheep. The large shade arbor was constructed where cooking and eating will take place. Finally, a ceremonial male hogan was built where the healing will take place. The laughter of playing children filled the sheep camp. The tinkling of sheep bell rang silvery from the sheep corral. Deep voices of men practicing songs echo far into the, into the mesa. Aroma of roasting mutton and fried bread filtered into the deep cloudless blue of the summer sky. Late the next day, morning dove and blue salt rode into the camp amidst barking sheep talk. Blue Salt carried his jish, a medicine bundle, into the ceremonial hogan and positioned himself in the western side of the circle that lined the wall. Old Lady Small Can was already lying upon her sheepskin. The hogan smell of sagebrush and cedar boughs. The hogan looked and felt holy. Surely the gods would feel at home here. The enemy way ceremony lasted three days and three nights. Songs were sung and blessing way prayers were chanted far into the night. The Hogan vibrated with mirth, warmth, and strong voices. Sage scent mixed with cook fire and coffee hung heavy for three days. The voices of children at play rang from the outside. When the last prayer was chanted, the last song sung and the bitter herbs drank, the medicine man and his helper were fed and he left for his Hogan three mesas to the north. Old Lady Small Cannon felt better for some times afterward. She managed to do some chores, light chores, even following her flock of sheep a few times. The fourth day following her ceremony was spent in meditation. She did no cooking, no fire building, no cutting, no handshaking. She remained to herself until the fifth day at which time she bathed and washed her hair. 
She placed her offering to the east and released her prayers upon the wind of the approaching storm. One day, old lady Small Cannon fell ill again. And medicine men were sought, and again, she had a ceremony. This happened several more times, and finally the relatives decided that she was much too ill to put her through another ceremony. Her relatives were near broke by now, paying healers far and near. Don't bother getting another healer. I cannot get well. I suppose my time has come, she said softly through her weakened voice. You will only become poorer and I worse. Take me out towards the north, build me a death arbor and leave me be, she moaned. But you cannot die. There must be something we can still do, her relative responded. The more protest, the more they protested, the weaker she got until finally they carried her out towards the north. Past some yucca plant and juniper trees, they made her a, a, as comfortable as possible upon sheepskin and colorful blankets. There, there can never, that can never be used again. They built her a fire and left her in the growing dark. Death will come for her this night. The children ask in fright. We do not know the old man left. The old man left foot died many winters ago. He hung out for two days. The elder responded. Far into the night, the family sat in silence. On the bedding next to the fire, old lady Small Cannon sang her death song in a weak voice. By the light of the east, I will travel in the dark's gentle caress. By the shimmering blue of the south, I will travel, covered by the dark's heavy cloak. By the golden glare of the west, I will travel upon darkness, relentless steed. Into the mystery of the north, I will travel, blessed with darkness's new vision. Back inside the Hogan, a child tried to sing along softly but was hushed quickly. You are not to, you are not upon the dark path yet, do not sing that song. In the weak glow of the kerosene lamp, the elders nodded their head and the young children clung to their mothers. The others snore in the sheepskin comfort. Massa, the family cat, purred in the corner. Old Lady Small Cannon's weakening voice faded with the fire. She laid her head upon her bed in the red glow of the late night's ember. She waited for death's cold grip. Ugly scratching upon the, ugly scratching sound approached her from all sides. And in the weak glow, the small figure scurrying around the edges of the darkness. Fiery red eyes darted all around her among splotches of sagebrush and snake weeds. Powerful medicine plant now hold horrible creatures of the night. As they crept closer and closer, she saw that they were rats. Ugly and filthy rats, they were coming to take her. So this was death's disguise this night. Old Lady Small Cannon tried to scream, but no sound escaped her throat. Back in Hogan, her relatives sat in silence. Even the snoring died down. The purring of the corner was, in the corner was absent. They all knew that their clan mother would be gone with the day's light. Old Lady Small Cannon stared in horror at the approaching mass of darkness. Meow! Meow! A terrible new sound broke the silence. She shuddered as something big and furry landed upon her blanket. Meow! Meow! Arched back on stiff leg, Musa the cat let out one more screech and yowl. She clawed at the approaching mass of rats. She snarled and scratched the ground around the old lady's bedding. Musa went tearing to the moving ground. She snapped and pawed the, the rats left and right. She snatched up a few and swept some into the hot embers. In the middle of the confusion, old lady small cannon, she sat up, using all of her dying strength. She watched in awe as the muscle bit and snarl and hurl little bodies all around. The rats retreated into the darkness. 
for a long while must have remained standing guard over the old lady. She purred and the old lady caressed her. She held the cat the rest of the night as she sat there trying to understand what had just happened. In the morning, she was still very much alive. She took off her bedding and walked back to the Hogan. Jidi, old lady Smulkan's ghost is already upon us. A cry arose from the sleeping figures. Blinking and rubbing their eyes, the relatives sat in utter confusion and fright as old lady took her place in the west side of the Hogan. No, no, my children, I am still flesh and blood. Death did not come for me in the night. Thousands of them, but Massa fought them off. Massa bravely stood her ground, and death loosened its icy grip on me. A murmur rose among the relatives as everyone started talking at once. Old Lady Small Canyon rose her aged hand and said, I had quite a night. Now I'm hungry. Is there any mutton stew and fried bread you left from yesterday? Massa, Massa, cat. That is a true story related to me, my grandmother, and old lady Small Canyon lives very close by, and she was one of the um, survivors of these stories. And the cats have always been very powerful in our, in our community. Virginal, I want to see the red desert dust in your coarse brown hair. At twilight, I, walk, I want to walk down the canyon and be in no hurry. Watch the moon come up and not have to be someplace else. Out of my blood, hair, and bone, I'll weave as a star quilt. Gather a pillow of sage when your heart is ready. I'll sweep the ground with cedar. Then we can build the fire slowly. Thank you. Thank you.